What changes has Herman Mashaba brought since taking office? Why are municipal entities like City Power and Pick It Up being reintegrated? And what is Mashaba doing to enforce city bylaws? And why has the mayor scrapped the Josie at Work program? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tse Lukoto. It is just under seven months since Herman Mashaba was sworn in as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg Metro. Mashaba promised to put the fight against corruption, service delivery and job creation high on his agenda. Then the reintegration of the city's 13 entities has started in earnest and is set to be completed in 18 months. Recently, the mayor and shareholders removed the entire board of city power, including its chairperson, Frank Chigani. Mashaba says dissolving the boards would save the city 18 million rand from the salaries of non-executive board members alone. Meanwhile, Gauteng MEC for Economic Development, Lebohang Maile, has described the scrapping of the Josie at Work program as reckless. We are live, and you can call us and air your views. The number is to dial 89 110 Our Twitter handle at question time to, for my guest today, Hemen Mashaba is the mayor, or the executive mayor, may I say, of the city of Johannesburg, and he joins us in studio. Brian, thank you very much for joining us, and I really appreciate the fact that when we call, you are there to come and talk to the people. I wish all leaders everywhere were like that. When we call them, they come and talk to the people. But welcome to Question Time. Thank you very much. A great opportunity. Actually, I think uh, as a country, we need to learn uh, to understand that we live in a de democratic dispensation. And leadership in a democratic dispensation is accountable uh, to the people. Yeah. In fact, um, uh, given opportunity, uh, uh, we should re actually be having this uh, responsibility on a daily basis mm. to account to our people because this is what democracy is all about. Certainly, certainly. And... Talking about accountability, um, since you took over, uh, like I said, it's almost seven months now. Um, where are you? You've found your footing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I think uh, Mpo, uh, what I've inherited is a huge uh, ship. Uh, and mm. I think to turn it around, it's not something that can uh, happen overnight. And mm. I think at the same time, what is actually quite... Uh, disturbing for me is to ensure that I have uh, a residence, uh, all the residents of the city of Johannesburg behind this understanding that uh, just seven w uh, weeks before we took over, all the voters actually voted uh, the previous administration out. They voted uh, council, approved a budget. A budget that, as I said, seven weeks later it was voted out. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the legislative framework in this country forced me to operate with that budget uh, until the end of uh, February, what just over a month ago, when I had an adjustment budget, fortunate enough, approved by council. That is when we are beginning to, to, to start delivering on the mandate given to us by the voters, firstly. And secondly, on this coming Thursday, for the first time, I'll be presenting my new budget, full budget, because the one that I presented to council uh, mm. a month ago was an adjustment budget, because with adjustment budget, you are allowed to make changes, but they cannot be major changes. It's okay. a legislative requirement. So I'm excited with this prospect on the stage they presenting to uh, council for the first time presenting this new budget. Okay, Raman, I think we're having some technical problem with your mic. So we're going to take a break and try to get that fixed. And a reminder that we are taking your call, 89 What do you want to ask the mayor about? Uh, jo Josie at work, the collapse of um, the boards of uh, uh, what uh, city power or the reintegration of the city uh, entities anything that you want to ask you want to ask him about Rosettenville anything anything that you want to ask 089 110 
If you ask this Irish master whiskey distiller why sometimes whiskey is paired with an E and sometimes without, he'd say, Oh, to be sure. Are you fair so good luck? It's the whole thing. They're a back and get off in the whiskey without the E. Uh, yeah, didn't catch that. But if you asked us the difference, we'd tell you that every whiskey from around the world is spelled without the E, except for Irish and American whiskeys. Get a 750ml bottle of Jamison Irish whiskey for only $269.99 from Tops at Spa. This Ford Cougar thing is becoming a hot potato for them, excuse the pun. US car maker Ford has finally admitted that a fault is causing some of its Ford Cougar SUVs to catch fire and it also formally issued a recall in South Africa. Ford needs to take accountability. We'll work with our dealers and uh, try to come up with a way that uh, satisfies them. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. We're talking to the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba. Rebecca, you're in Pimville. Welcome. Rebecca? Hello. Hi, welcome. Oh, hello. I'm fine and you. Thank you. I'd like to ask the mayor about this uh, family houses. The war on family houses. How is it going to be resolved? Because ah. people are losing their houses because of it. Is yes. there a solution to it? Ah, thank you very much for that question, Rebecca. Yes. Oh, people are fighting over this uh, family houses. Whether it be a four room or no room, you know. Look, I think it's a, it's a very complex matter because it involves families. And I think as government, we have uh, a limit how far we can uh, intervene in mm. family squabbles. I think for us as the city of Johannesburg, we, at the new administration, we committed to actually fast track um, service delivery when it comes to title deed allocation to our people. The, as I speak to you right now, we have in excess of over 2,000 title deeds that we need to issue out uh, to our okay. residents, people who've lived in these uh, houses. Mm -hmm. But then this particular question that uh, the, uh, the, um, the listeners uh, um, uh, put uh, across to me, it's really one of those challenges that um, as you, as government uh, uh, is prepared to uh, allocate uh, these houses, then you'll find there's this internal farm family matter. What we are doing with our, with our legal uh, the, the department, we, we can only really help to facilitate as to who should really be the, the, okay. the original owner. But unfortunately, if families have uh, done whatever in their own capacity, unfortunately, they make it really very difficult uh, for us as, as a city because you'll find the original owners of these houses, some of them have passed on, yes. uh, some of them have moved on somewhere else, and the house was left uh, to, their, to yeah. their children, and mm. now their children for some reason decided to you know do some deals that uh, transact in a manner that mm. is very complicated which I, as I really believe is going to really all be almost impossible for us as, as, okay. as, a, as government uh, to prescribe to people what uh, what to do okay I'm gonna try and squeeze us squeeze as many questions as we can Sam you are in Pulukwane welcome okay, yes yes uh, uh, thank you for, for taking my call you're welcome uh, uh, mine is, is not a question, it's a comment. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's one thing that I like about him and Mashab, which I heard him uh, uh, say. Yes. Uh, in any country, for you to develop, irrespective of, 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 of the, the constitution, the first thing that you need to do is to take care of your own. South Africa has a problem whereby we allowed the borders to be open and everybody, whether legal or illegal, but... I'm, I'm, I'm basing my issue on the illegal part of, 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 of what Hemen Mashaba has always said uh, when he mentioned that uh, illegal, illegal immigrants create problems. If you go to Cresta, there's an area called, uh, what's this? Just behind Cresta, it's, 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 uh, I just forgot the name of the, of the place. In that place, it was a, 
talking about the 1990 coming forward. But currently, if you go there, the, the property value have went down. The place is, 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 is infested with drugs and it is terrible. So for me, what I'd like him to, 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 to focus on is to ensure that he continues mentioning this because of this, this effect. No country in the world, Singapore, is developed uh, because of they took care of their own effect before they allow anybody to come in and, and do as they do. In South Africa, you have a budget. How will you be able to, 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 to cater for everybody okay. before you've taken care of your own? Sam, thank you very much. Like you said, that was a comment. Before we go to the bylaws, let's talk about this reintegration of city powers and all that. Um, accusations were, you see this Herman, he's just trying to deal with the ANC. But uh, what have I got to do with the ANC? I have a mandate uh, by the voters of this country to bring about change. And fast track it for, for that matter, not just really bring about change. Because, mm. I mean, the city, as we see it, um, it's got this complicated compass, some structure that um, I have to, as a city with a 100% shareholder, I have to account uh, or deal with, with the delivery of services like electricity, water. I must deal through a board of directors. Board of directors, in the event uh, that you don't have electricity, the residents out there, when they need electricity or water, they don't go to this board. They come to me as an executive mayor. Correct. And now I have to go through this board. Sometimes they refuse to cooperate uh, with me. And I've made a commitment and promise to our people that we need to fast track service delivery. And fortunate enough, when I put this proposal through to council, uh, fortunate enough, I received full cooperation by, uh, by council that I reintegrated these entities so that we can have a, 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 a free flow uh, service delivery. Uh, we take full responsibility and accountability to our people to fast track service delivery. Okay. Yes, they, you can talk about the savings of the, pay, of the payment of uh, non-executive directors. I think for me, it's a, it's a small matter. The big issue for me is about making sure that we can fast track service delivery. And it's for that reason that uh, uh, I've taken a decision to reintegrate these entities back into the city. Daniel, you are in deep slot. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call. All right, man. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. May, how are you? Fine. How are you, sir? Uh, the issue of the city of Johannesburg EMS. What do you know that the Mala administration about in the EMS? What can we say about it? And uh, this is section of the employees of the city of Johannesburg EMS. And the shortage of the vehicles in the city of Johannesburg EMS. What can we say uh, about it? Okay, Daniel, is there corruption there in the emergency uh, services? Uh, I, I, if, if, if I can ask the mayor, is, is there anything that you know about that? Well, what do you know? Well, you'll tell us. If, if you can ask Mr. Michelson, maybe if they can go deeper in the EMS department and try to find out what, what, what's going on in that department. Thank you, Daniel. Well, uh, Daniel seemed to know something. Which well, it looks to... like Daniel knows something that would really be appreciated if he's happy to share this with us. As you're aware, mm -hmm. when I took over the city of Johannesburg with a num with amount of uh, uh, corruption that I found in the system, that's why I had to, to form a, a separate uh, forensic unit to deal with this particular uh, matter of corruption. Because I think for me, uh, the, uh, the question of corruption in the city of Johannesburg went beyond corruption. It was outright looting of uh, state resources, literally everywhere. And uh, fortunately enough, I'm glad to announce that uh, Sheriff, uh, uh, General CBI is doing a fantastic job uh, in ensuring that we root out this corruption. I'm on a massive drive uh, okay. in ensuring that we can educate uh, our public servants that uh, stealing public money is actually stealing from our people. Okay. We sit in a, as a city of Johannesburg with massive backlog. Over 300,000 of our people uh, 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 don't have homes. Housing backlog. We sit with 181 informal settlements. We sit with unemployment of uh, one in three of our residents are not working. So every time you steal a cent from our public, you not steal from me or from from you. They steal from our poor people because this is the money that's supposed to go into service delivery. So okay. I'm urging all our residents, all our communities, please report cases of corruption because we are committed in rooting it out. Okay, I, I want us to go to this uh, bylaws. My executive producer apparently took some pictures, so he will fire me if I don't uh, use them. But let's take Mandisa first. Mandisa, you are in Midrand. Yes, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call, Mandisa. Yes, how are you, Mr. Mayor? 
Hi, fine. How are you, Mandisa? I'm good. I would like to know, I'm um, staying in River Ridge, it's under my trend. So I would like to know if I want to register for an RTP house, where should I go? Because everywhere where you ask people, if you're not politically active with the ANC, you won't get any information. So information like this can need be made publicly, maybe to be printed on the newspaper so that people know, people who are not politically involved with the ANC. Oh, okay, Mandisa. It's actually yes. quite sad, um, Paul, that our residents over many years have been put into this arrangement where they needed to have political connections and relationships to be able to access services to, from the city. Particular point in case, uh, this matter of Josie at work. The reason why I decided to do away with the system was because it was used as a political patronage where jobs were offered to people with the connections. They formed uh, this uh, labor-broking system. Now you can imagine our residents, instead of registering for, uh, for an RDP house, you have to have connections. But then those you, should not, you should not really operate on those bases. We expect our residents, in fact, uh, uh, we've already almost uh, completed uh, the, uh, the, our housing list, official one, which I'm going to make uh, public okay. as part of our, my, our engagement all, uh, in April as, as part of the IDP. Okay. Uh, right now, I've got the auditors verifying this list. That once this list is signed off by the auditors, I will sign it off and it will be a public document which will be available at all our offices uh, can, uh, the citywide okay. so that at any point in time, if you're number 100 on that, wait, on that waiting list, no one else would come ahead of you when the government allocates houses. Okay. Every time we have an opportunity to provide houses of, or, uh, to, for the residents, then it will go by that list. The only time we will remove you from that list, that's when you obviously win a lotto or your financial status improves. Because okay. obviously by the time we allocate the house, we have to do an assessment to see whether you still qualify or not. But then our residents need to understand as a city of Johannesburg, we sit with a massive housing backlog. Okay. And right now, as, we, as I'm talking to you, right, the, the, our city can only afford uh, to build between two and a half and 3,000 houses. So I would really be led one of these days before the end of this year, I can actually announce to our residents how I intend addressing this particular housing. Okay. And so that reason that the inner city of Johannesburg is a crucial part of my strategy to provide housing to our residents. Okay, let's go to the bylaws uh, before I, I have to come and knock at your door looking for a job. Right, my executive producer says to me, there's prostitutes operating... 400 meters away from the police station. If you can look here, uh, this is uh, what, let me just check with them. If it is, is this Rosettenville? It looks like Rosettenville to me. Is, is this Rosettenville? Okay, um, they're saying, well, that's where the police were camping. Um, if you check there, there's a, a, a little dot there that says police. Police are camping there. Prostitutes are operating uh, down the road. And uh, actually, we had pictures of um, uh, 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 what is it? The 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 metro police also just passing by when people are drinking outside a poli a, a bottle store and all that. I hope they'll have that. So let's talk about this briefly before we take Tinasha, who is also in Tefontein. Well, I think uh, this whole issue of uh, Tefontein, Yeovil, and all the other areas around the city is of major, major concern to me, mm. uh, where our young girls, you talk about prostitutes, you know who these prostitutes are? Our young girls who are robbed of their future by criminal syndicates, turning them into prostitutes working for them. And I think for anybody to expect me to allow such a situation to happen under my watch, it's, it's not going to happen. Yes, short term is happening. Mm. I can assure you and I can assure residents of the city that uh, we are introducing uh, the municipal courts in the city so that we can deal with these matters as speedily as possible. Because we need the support and, and the cooperation of the national government. Because please, uh, I need the, our residents to understand, mm. as the city of Johannesburg, Certain law enforcement is not our competency. We don't have uh, our own courts. So that's why we are now busy re-establishing okay. municipal courts to deal with now, minor... This uh, one, yeah? mm -hmm. this one, Brian. Um, wow. This Metro Police uh, vehicle is passing by a bottle store at that corner where people are just drinking outside and they do nothing. 
Well, I think, uh, let me tell you uh, sometimes how our law enforcement agencies' um, the hands are tied, particularly JMPD, because JMPD, um, in terms of what we can do, we can only arrest, and once we arrest, we have to give you to national government because they're the ones uh, with prosecutorial uh, authority, they're the ones with courts, yeah. they're the ones with prisons. Because this is what happens to us, which is really very frustrating, including uh, our, our, our colleagues in, in South African police services, where I don't really believe personally that they have uh, the support of the national government in ensuring that we can step up, stamp up the, the rule of law. Any country without the rule of law, it's a country that is bound to fail. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, South Africa, as we stand right now, because it's a question that I ask every day, do we still have the national government that is actually serious about stamping out uh, 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 the levels of corruption and crime in our communities? And personally, the, my own experiences is that, unfortunately, I don't believe we do have. But I think at the end of the day, I'm saying to us, as residents, as communities, let's hold all the political leadership accountable. Now, from the, the city, yeah. from provincial government, national government, hold us accountable so that we understand cases like this. Mm -hmm. um, who, who issues uh, uh, liquor licenses in our city? It's not us. And we have to have these uh, uh, entities operating, operating next to churches. They are given licenses. No, what no. About the strip shows that, and strip shows and all know? this. Stuff. How do you uh, issue a, a, a liquor license in front of a school, in front of a, a church? Mm. Unfortunately, these are some of the issues as a country we need to uh, to engage upon. Because I think for for me, in particular, for the city of Johannesburg, these are the issues that we're going to be challenging the provincial government. We're going to be engaging national government. Issues that we're not comfortable with, mm. if it means we will take them to the Constitutional Court, we will take them. If they are not going to give us the powers to be, for us to be able to determine who can run a bottle store, who can run a, a nightclub in a uh, 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 when, entities in, in our city. When residents or people in general don't adhere to buy laws, they turn the city into a slum. Absolutely. So well, that's the reason why you, you find uh, hijacked buildings uh, in the inner city of Johannesburg. That's why yes. we, you find uh, the breakdown of law and order. And you, what you are find. you doing with the city centre? Well, uh, uh, I'm engaging and engaging very seriously and robustly ar around this particular matter because the level of, of crime in our city has is, is, is reached unacceptable levels. And I have the responsibility to protect our residents. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I need the cooperation and the support of, of national and provincial government. Are you not because, getting it? No, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm afraid not. Look at, I mean, a post, uh, p p p point in case of, uh, of home affairs. How long have I been raising this matter with the home affairs to us, help us to ensure that uh, the city of Johannesburg over the last 130 years built around foreign people coming into the city? And that is a road that we as a city of Johannesburg want to continue on. But we as a city of Johannesburg cannot unfortunately be expected uh, to, uh, to have people in, in our city who are okay. not documented. What we are saying to, to Home Affairs, please take the responsibility to make sure that all our foreign nationals who are in our country, please protect them, ensure that you give them, as soon as they arrive here, make sure that they have the necessary documentation okay. for those who qualify, so that those who don't qualify, please get them out of the city or get them out of our country. Okay. But uh, South Africa and the city of Johannesburg cannot can ill afford to, to, to house and, and, and keep residents with no uh, proper documentation when we expect South Africans to help. But at the same time, I think for me, what we are doing, the national government is doing, failing our foreign nationals because a big percentage of our foreign nationals are law-abiding citizens. They are adding value to our, to our country. They are investing in our country. Uh, they, yes, they come into no, the city true, and, we, and we want them. But the thing is, if you allow few criminal elements to dominate, unfortunately, what happens? Then everyone is under impression that all our foreign nationals are criminals, which okay. is not the case. Can I get a commitment from you, Mr. Mayor, that the, this illegal sex shows and all that in Hilbro will be raided sometime soon and will see an end to it? And you know, uh, some dignity brought back into the city. In fact, one of the things I honestly and truly I cannot wait to have is the day shortly when we can start having our um, municipal courts functioning. 
uh, right now our legal department uh, is working on ensuring that we, we, we train our prosecutors okay. so that we can actually go and deal with this particular matters. Those who build in our city without having the necessary permission, I can assure you and I can assure residents of the city, action will be taken against them. Herman Mashaba, thank you so much. We really appreciate you making time thank to Thank you talk so to much us. for this great opportunity. Okay, there you had it. Municipal courts are coming in Joburg. You're going to be in trouble there. But that was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show from me and the entire crew. Mudimale Tehante. Hi, Bechot.